Okay, so you just found out your student has dyslexia. Either it's your child or it's a student in your class and you're wondering, now what? So the first thing we want you to remember is every child can learn to read. And at Authentic Teacher, we work on their strengths and focus on their strengths. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to talk about your number one priority, fluency training. Your goal is to rewire your student's brain so words and sounds become automatic. The good news, it's easy to do. It requires no training or expertise. It's fun and it works in every case. The first thing you want to do is start with rhyming. Yes, Mother Goose. Any fun poems your child enjoys, I don't care how old they are. If they're in high school and they're a struggling reader, you've got to nail down rhyming and Mother Goose rhyming or um, poems. So fun and easy is the focus. We want to see repeated reading. Read those poems over and over. Find some limericks if you have older students. Um, poems that are fun and poems... Poems are fun and they are short. When you're done with poems, you're going to move on to lyrics, singing. There's so many songs on YouTube. Christmas carols, patriotic songs, campfire songs, car and bus ride songs. Go Noodles got great music. Uh, if you go to church or any kind of religious place, whatever you sing there, your hymnal or whatever kind of songbook you have. Karaoke. The big thing is make sure their eyes are on the words, that they're looking at the lyrics and reading along with the lyrics. Um... And then we also want to focus on easy books. We want to make sure that your child has access to books where they can read 19 out of every 20 words correctly for independent reading. You know, if they're going to read something a little bit harder, you can go ahead and guide them or help them. But when they're reading something on their own for fluency practice, they should be able to read 19 out of 20 words correctly. Now, if they have a strong program, that should be easy to follow along. Um... Repeated reading. So you read it together, or you read it first, then you read it together, then they read it independently. So we really want to focus on reading things over and over. So that's where fluency is going to come. Um, bonus if your students using the McGraw Hill Wonders program, all those books are online. The teacher should be able to assign it to the student so they could read it the night before they're going to read it in the classroom read it and listen to it in the classroom again that day. It even like highlights the word as it's going through the text for them. Then they read it with their teacher and then you can read it again that night four times. Repeated reading. Again, passages or words should be read a minimum of four times for fluency. So if you have a kindergartner, maybe you're going to repeat the sounds. First graders, you're going to work on words, sight words, decoding CVC words as you get older, reading passages for fluency, you know, reading a paragraph over and over. You're changing your child's brain. Practice is the key to becoming a skilled reader. When a student practices repeated reading words, the neural connections for their words are strengthened and it becomes stored in their brain on reserve until it is needed. With easy books, the child is in familiar territory since most of the words they contain are already registered in the reading circuits of the brain. These books help consolidate reading skills already learned. Repeated practice with them is key to enforcing and strengthening the neural wiring for specific words and word families. Uh, partner reading. Reading for pleasure or for information. So if they're reading something a little more challenging, it's not an easy book, we want to partner them with someone. Student gain, students gain from reading more difficult books with guidance or assistance. Reading about a specific topic of interest will help a child develop an increased vocabulary. A strong vocabulary is one of the best ways for students to build fluency and help them remember words. Students are going to need to read more challenging texts in social studies, science, word problems, and math, or just to follow their own curiosity. Challenging books allow a child to expand their knowledge of letter sound linkages and of exceptions to rules. They help build critical vocabulary and enable students to learn new concepts. Some opportunities for repeated reading and partner reading. Listen to a story together. Read with a stronger reader, either in the classroom with a partner, at home with a younger sibling. It makes them feel, you know, more empowered that they're reading, you know, easy books to their younger siblings or get an older sibling to read a more challenging book. A relative, an auntie, an uncle, a parent, guardian, anybody reading together. Write their own story and then read that together. 
listen on the Overdrive app, or there's a great website, Story Online, by the S S Screen Actors Guild. Get the book out of the library and have the student listen as the actor reads it online together. Um, you can watch those videos, but I highly recommend the student has the book in their hands. Uh, Audible, of course, has tons of books you can download, but of course you have to pay for that. The Overdrive app is through the library and is free. Um, lyrics, make sure you follow along reading the words. So like I said, songs are great. Reader's theater, puppet scripts, acting, any kind of um, you know script where they're going to read something over and over, challenging um, words. And I've seen so many times where with puppet scripts or readers theater, the weakest reader in the classroom is the strongest person. So we're really focusing on their strengths. They'll be like, hey, it's your turn. Or it's your line. They can follow along better because it makes sense to them. It's authentic. Podcasting. There are some great podcasts for kids out there. One of my favorites is the um, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls is a great um, inspiring podcast. But there's lots of podcasts for kids. Flashcards, sound grids, um, and I've got a picture of what a sound grid looks like. It's kind of an array of four to five letters at the most, or sounds, or words, and you're just practicing them um, in a rotation and going through before you read something. Flashcards, multiple copies of each card, each word. So I highly recommend you have four copies of each word, repeated, repeated, repeated. We're focusing on the child's strengths. Remember, there's way more, your child has way more strengths than weaknesses. There's so many successful people that have dyslexia. Um, you can do this. Your child's going to be able to do it. Uh, if you practice on text fluency, they're going to see huge growth. They're, you know, if you had like a chart, the arrow's going to be going up. Celebrate their effort. Celebrate their improvement. And just remember, teachers communicate with their parents. Parents communicate with their teachers. You'd be surprised how many teachers probably haven't had any training on how to deal with a student with dyslexia or very little. Um, according to Yale's research, one out of every five students in a classroom or one out of every five people has some form of dyslexia or learning reading disability. These um, you know, strategies work for all students. If you want more recommendations for the best curriculums, intervention programs your child should be using in school, which I definitely believe they should have a systematic direct instruction program. Uh, strategies that you can begin implementing in your classroom immediately to build fluency and confidence, not to mention, like I said, test scores are going to go up. Lessons, resources, and learning opportunities you can access for free. Join us for our next free webinar at AuthenticTeacher.com forward slash dyslexia.